Yo, what up, Street Gods? Eric Kim, or it's some more uh, Turbo Thoughts for for us. So this one is on uh, Stoic Strategy. So um, if, assuming you live in society with other people, uh, being a Stoic or having certain living Stoic strategies, I think is wise. So, um, so some uh, some some simple thoughts. Um, First and foremost, uh, like a mental analogy I like to think about, you know, I got this from reading one of the Stoics, might have been Seneca, Epictetus, uh, Epictetus, what do you want to name him? Um, Marcus Aurelius is like, ignore the barking of dogs and or if you know that a dog has rabies and it's barking at you and foaming from the mouth, you're just like, the, the wise thing is just kind of keep your distance away from the, the dog with the rabies because it's like, you're close to the dog, you know, forming from the mouth, it's gonna give you rabies. So the intelligent thing is to not interact with the dog. And also you don't like blame the dog for having rabies. It's like, okay, for one reason or another, it got rabies. The intelligent thing is just keep your distance. So like 12, the 12 foot rule, right? Like, you know, the whole like COVID, like social distancing. I'm like, if somebody is like, has bad vibes or bad energy or whatever, just keep your, keep your distance. Um, and I mean, I guess it's like a dog has rabies. Let's say it's like a random wild dog. It's like, are you gonna try to cure or save or help or treat the dog with rabies? I don't know, it's up to you. It's like, if it's a random dog, I wouldn't. I wouldn't risk uh, getting bitten. And that's the thing too, is like with people who uh, have bad vibes or you know, who are toxic, whatever, it's not necessarily their fault, but you have the control to, um, whether to keep your distance or to engage or to, to not engage. Hey Jim, staying warm? Um, and so, uh, some other ways to think about it, and this sounds more immoral, like not moral, <laughs> sounds like a bad, bad, bad guy way to think, is that like, consider yourself so high and so lofty and so above everyone else and above everything else that in fact, you don't like, you almost see it as too base or unbecoming of you to to associate with people who are super based like you know like got like these random like millennials or kids in <clears throat> orange county or whatever in irvine just like talking gossip about random basic people's stupid stuff drama i'm just like like you're so you're so basic like don't don't talk about that it's like why, why do you care right um and so actually uh curating your inner circle is actually um, a good practical thing is that like if you're around somebody who is like basic and gossipy and you know, duh, 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 that's going to bring out the inner gossiper in you and it's, it's not a good thing so like even one of the things i appreciate about um you know seneca being with uh, seneca etc is um <laughs> yeah, check out check out this cat this cat is chilling um <clears throat> so so essentially like one of the benefits you know having kids just me seneca and cindy we just spend more time with the with one another and we kind of enjoy our company right and it's it's good because like being with sen and stuff like that like it's not judgmental and basic and stuff like that also to uh one thought that I had when it comes to stoicism or ethics or the way you perform, it's just kind of more of a personal pride thing. And this is where I think personal pride is a good thing where essentially the way you interact and you talk and stuff like that, you um, you want to create your own aesthetics and your own image of yourself. And so for example, like even I found that like whenever I, you know, say bad things about other people behind their back or whatever, like afterwards it makes me feel kind of dirty. It, like not dirty because I feel guilty about it. It's just more like, I don't like that kind of behavior for myself, so it's a good reminder to not do it. The interesting thing is the difference between shame and guilt. I think shame is kind of more of your own moral code and ethics, uh, whereas guilt is more like you know societal or <clears throat> what you've been taught by society. So don't do anything that you feel kind of inner shame about. And if you do feel inner shame, just kind of question it. Um, ultimately, for me, it's kind of more of an aesthetic thing that like. I see myself EK so highly that I ain't finna engage myself in base stuff. Um, also, uh, 
I mean, once you conquer the fear of death, then there's really nothing that you should be scared of. And if you could also adopt a more aesthetic lifestyle where, you know, you don't need much, you don't own a car, you don't own a home, you don't have a mortgage, whatever, uh, then there's kind of nothing really owns you. So you should just take all the interesting risks in life necessary towards your own personal end means. Like even the thing that people don't understand, right? It's like read the Elon Musk, uh, the what? I forget which, who wrote that biography, but the, his biography is just like, dude, Elon, when he was starting off, right? Like, dude was like sleeping in the office and sleeping back with his brother, sharing one computer, and they're just take, taking showers at the local YMCA. And he was subsisted on what, $2 a day, just eating nothing but like spaghetti and hot dogs, I guess. So, dude essentially li lived like a aesthetic monk for most of his life. And even when he was doing the Tesla Model 3 initial craziness, like sleeping bag in the office kind of thing. And so people was like, so funny because like everyone wants to be a cool, cool billionaire because they want to live this like super plush, luxury rich life. But in fact, all the people who've done made it like that are the ones who've been super scrappy and kind of more like frugal in like even even Jeff Bezos, right? Like. OG like you know driving driving uh pickup boxes to the the car um in his car what his beat up what Honda Accord whatever he had to the post office and then wondering oh one day hopefully we have enough money to afford a um a forklift um and so actually the the real entrepreneur is the one who is actually maximally scrappy and doesn't require much and actually uh I'm starting to realize this more about entrepreneurship too. It's, it's not really about the you know, money making or whatever. It's kind of a... You must have such deep conviction in believing in something that you're willing to risk X, Y, and Z in order to achieve it. So the Stoic loves reality, loves being alive, interacting with other people. Um, it seems like the, the goal is to try to ex um, extract the maximum out of existence, the upside, and clip the downside. Um, and uh, another another practical stoic strategy is like, somebody says something, is whatever. Just like, say something totally random and make a joke and just walk away, right? It's like, if somebody says something factually infactual about like something that you do, right? You're, you just say something totally unrelated, like a non sequitur, and just walk away and smile. And so actually, uh, humor and being a jester and joker and not taking yourself or anything too seriously is actually a good uh, stoic strategy. The he or she who is very uh, self-confident and self-aware and uh, doesn't require the approval of others is actually not afraid of making a fool of themselves or just acting like a, a big kid. Um, and also, I think, actually, in fact, when necessary, the Stoic should employ anger in a productive way where if you see, like, um, Nassim Taleb has this uh, saying, right? Don't, don't give shit, but also don't take shit. So first and foremost, be nice, super nice to everyone you meet, right? But the second somebody rubs you the wrong way, I would say just forgive them once. If they rub you the wrong way second twice, then it's a good idea to use your anger, your madness, or your whatever to either verbally yell at them or, you know, fight back rather than just being a passive meek person. Being a passive aggressive is probably the worst thing. I prefer, like, be, like, if you really have been wrong, be, like, not passive aggressive, be active aggressive. Yeah, because passive aggressive is just, like, I think, uh, I think uh, ethically, it's actually, I think just aesthetically, it's actually worse. It's like ultimate pettiness. Um, even one thing I heard about couples, the number one uh, thing that destroys couples is uh, resentment. Resentment typically happens when um, couples are petty, passive aggressive. They don't actually air out their grievances. So actually, in some ways, it's, it's better to every once in a while, like have uh, a bunch of small fires than one big fire, which totally destroys... Uh, the thing right so anyways with stoic strategies in life just come up with fun little mental tricks for yourself um get your testosterone up eat more red meat beef ribs at costco business center 
Also, the, the top sirloin, which is actually known as picanha at Fogo de Chao and Brazilian Cherascudos, is uh, quite good. Sleep more, more espresso, more hype lifting, heavier weights at the gym. And know that uh, you're invincible, nothing can conquer you.